Now, who is the Atlantic? The Atlantic is a globalist, leftist, bourgeois, elitist think tank that calls themselves a news outlet. They're just a CIA cutout. CIA is completely and totally leftist. So is the State Department. So is the FBI. So is the ATF. So is any other government institution you want to name, even ones that claim to be centrist, like you know the Congressional Bus- Budget Office and so Labor uh, Bureau of Labor and Statistics, all are left lane. NARA, the National Archives, all bourgeois leftist globalist elites are all part of the part of the Democratic Party and the globalist elite who all meet at Davos once a year or more than that. But re- so this is what their paper puts out. And you're supposed to go, oh, this is a paper because you know what? There's I-, I can't even tell you, and you can get this information from Mike Benz on. Twitter, the greatest deep state uh, analyst you know, on the globe is Mike Benz. He's, I mean, unbelievable. You have to watch it to see it. But anyway, the, these are, you would be like, well, no, there's Republicans that are on, on the Atlantic Council that are writers for the Atlantic. Yeah, they're rhino Republicans, the Romneys of the world, the Mike Pence's of the world, who are nothing more than Democratic Party whores. That's what they are. They're just Democratic Party whores. They're actually, they actually are shills for the Democratic Party. They're actually put in those places so real Republicans can't be in those positions of power. They make sure the Democratic Party makes sure they put Willard Romney in that senatorial position <laughs> out of Utah so that a real conservative can't be there. And I could go into my whole Washington, D.C. cesspool. A synergistic tension thing, but I'm not going to do that to you because you've already heard it. But The Atlantic, who allegedly is a news outlet, writes Robert F. Kennedy Jr. once sold me cocaine at Harvard. At KB Anderson writes, I oh, wonder why this story never came out until this week. Yeah, weird. That's weird. The story never came out until this week. Hmm. That's weird. I, I thought you were a news institution. Uh, oh, oh, now that he is your political adversary, but I thought you were a news institution. I thought you were apolitical or unbiased. Aren't, aren't you unbiased? You're a news institution. But yet... For some reason, all you do is attack your political opposition that you're not supposed to have. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was fine before when he was just talking about pollution and vaccines. But then when he signed into a Trump, now you come out and attack him. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is well into his 60s. And you've never said a word about this before. And we can't find out who it was that put cocaine in the White House. But we can talk about somehow Robert F. Kennedy Jr., I guess, as a 19-year-old in college at Harvard, sold cocaine to somebody. <laughs> some, some 45 years ago, this occurred. But we can't figure out who put, the, who put cocaine in the White House a year ago. That makes, that makes his embrace of Donald Trump somewhat awkward. Why? <laughs> Why would that be? Shall we, shall we delve into the past of Joseph Robin at Biden and of Hunter Biden and, and of Kamala Harris? Who likes to keep people on death row when they have exculpatory evidence to get them off death row? Death row. Who likes to keep people in jail for uh, for free labor when they're supposed to? She actually extends their sentences so that she can keep them in jail for free labor. But we can talk about that. That's that to me is somewhat awkward.